Good day everybody, RC Grabbag here. Welcome back to the channel. So in my last video, I tried my hand at making some scale conifer variety trees using different techniques. In this video, it's back to the layout room to continue with the build and a number of different tasks to accomplish. We'll also be taking a look at the newly released Division Point General Electric steam turbines in Union Pacific, Great Northern, and New York Central livery. So let's get into it. So first off is a somewhat unusual event. I had a floor put in after the benchwork was in place. Obviously this wouldn't be considered the normal sequence of events, but it proved to be not too difficult. The flooring is a thin durable wood styled vinyl and each leg of the layout needed to be lifted only about a half an inch to slide each piece underneath. Stuff stored under the layout had to be moved around as well, but again not too difficult. It happened this way because back when the layout was started I wasn't really motivated to think about flooring. Just goes to show you anything is possible. In these next few scenes, I'm putting track in place to serve as an entrance and exit to the hidden staging tracks. This involves steps I've covered in previous videos for sub road bed and track installation. One of the runs into the staging area is fairly long and will connect to the stone arch bridge with all the embedded turnout mechanisms featured in a previous video. Sub road bed installation is followed with the cork road bed and finally the track. I'm also dragging a soldering rig around to solder all the track joints. I'm also incorporating narrow gauge into the layout, and here I am putting some of those pieces in place, again using the same track laying techniques I've covered in previous videos. I know it's kind of hard as a viewer to get an idea of how all this stuff fits together given the size of the layout, but I will go into greater detail in future videos as things get worked out. But for now, this is the narrow gauge taking a turn to head under the shorter trestle and canyon bridge. And here it is coming out the other side of the layout and it's being connected to some existing narrow gauge track that was there earlier. Here I am continuing the narrow gauge run up to the higher points of the layout. This is going to be a fairly long climb for the narrow gauge as it eventually rises about two feet from the lowest point on the layout. And this is the same area from another angle. Just trying to get the grade right. After the sub road bed is in place, next goes the cork road bed and then the track. And now we're back in the previous areas putting down the narrow gauge track. The flickering that you're seeing in these time lapse segments is sunlight coming in through the windows, changing as it goes in and out of cloud cover. This is a section of dual gauge track on the stone arch bridge that I'm extending now into a longer run. This dual gauge will eventually link up to both narrow gauge and standard gauge railway to provide transportation for a future logging and lumber operation. Now 
And here it is coming around to the other side of the layout near its link up to the narrow and standard gauge. Cork roadbed is down and now I'm just putting the track in place. I'm now getting some more of the track in shape for painting and weathering. This work started with fitting some ties to the large rail gaps left over from the track lane. Now I'm covering up some of the layout to protect it from paint overspray. The paint I am using is the same Krylon coffee bean I've used previously, which has a nice dark brown color and serves as a good starting point for weathering. I use some scrap cork roadbed as an eraser to move the still wet paint from the top of the rails before it dried. The cork really works well for this task. Next, I started putting in some pieces that will serve to hold up more mountain scenery. I'm really concentrating activity in the area around the smaller trestle and the canyon bridge to bring scenery into this area and blend it all together. I have a fair amount of track that will be going through tunnels. This track has to be accessible in the event of something like a derailment, and in such an event I don't want the equipment tumbling to the ground, so I'm laser cutting strips of 1 8 inch acrylic to make guards for the tunnel areas. Each strip is about an inch and a half wide, and I'm cutting holes as well for the screws at regular intervals in each strip. 
I'll use these to fasten the acrylic to the side of the sub road bed in the tunnel areas. I'm using these half inch long truss head screws as fasteners. The truss head will spread the load of tightening the screw a bit and reduce the chance of cracking the acrylic. Once they are installed, the guards are very sturdy and the clear acrylic allows me to see problems and not block line of sight. Now, let's take a break and have a look at Division Point's General Electric steam turbines. This is the newly released General Electric steam turbines numbers 1 and 2 from Division Point. These brass HO scale locomotives are offered in the Union Pacific, Great Northern, and New York Central paint schemes. Let's have a look at the UP versions first. As expected, detail and paint is beautiful. The New York Central and Great Northern versions of these locomotives come in a hatches open configuration as opposed to the UP's more streamlined configuration. These open hatches are fixed in place and can't be closed. Although it was an option, these particular locomotives do not currently have decoders installed. I do have the decoders with me, but I plan to do some lighting effects similar to what I've done in my Overland Models versions of these locomotives, so I got them without the decoders installed before delivery. There were only two of these locomotives made in real life. During their life and service, they wore black for New York Central, armor yellow and leaf brown for Union Pacific, and dark gray for the Great Northern. This is a comparison of Overland Models version of this locomotive compared to Division Points. The Overland Models version is in the foreground. Hope you enjoyed a look at Division Points new steam turbines. This also concludes the layout update. In the next video, we'll see some more mountains rising off the benchwork and other scenery coming together. We'll also take a look at some fascia construction and go into detail about how this was accomplished. And now we've reached the random topic portion of the video. We had some really nice fall colors this year, so I'm sharing some autumn scenes from around the neighborhood. If you're interested, stick around. Otherwise, see you next time.